Hello and welcome to another video about Star Wars The Old Republic. So this video I'm going to be kind of going back to the beginning. We're going to be showing those brand new players. Either you barely played the game or you are thinking about getting into the game and you haven't played it. We're going to go through some stuff. I'm going to make a series here where we just kind of go through a bunch of stuff. There's a lot of things to learn in this game. A lot of different things uh, that you might find complex, overwhelming, so on. And yeah, I just want to make some stuff to share some of the knowledge I've gained in my couple of years playing the game. First thing first, when you load up the game, you'll be asked to select your server. You've got two North American servers, Shatil Shan, which tends to be a little more West Coast. Starforge tends to be a little more East Coast for the player base. But both of them offer, you know, a, a large number of players on them and a lot of uh, opportunities to join guilds, to do ratings, so on. I could be wrong, but I do believe that Starforge has a reputation of being a little more roleplay based than Shatil Shan. Then you've got your European English server Darth Melgus, followed by your French and your German European servers as well. So as you can see I have 11 characters on Shatil Shan. I'm going to select Starforge though. Let's pick a character on a new server. I would highly suggest skipping level boosted characters if you've already subbed and you have the ability for a level boosted character. I would say skip it, do the class story, start with just a regular character at a low level. Here, you have to make a super important choice. Are you going to be on the side of the Republic? Or the Sith Empire? Dun, dun, dun. Anyways, this is not super important. Choose what you want to play, what you feel like playing. Don't think about it too hard. It's really easy to create additional characters, really easy to change your mind later. So just pick whichever one tickles your fancy at the moment. So now we're in the character creation screen. And now there's a couple things that we want to think about here. So. First thing is, along the bottom it says select the class. You'll notice that there's four categories with two different icons each. So these four categories, Sith Warrior, Sith Inquisitor, Bounty Hunter, Imperial Agent, they are the four different class stories for the Sith Empire. So a Sith Warrior story will play the exact same if you pick a Sith Marauder or a Sith Juggernaut. The Bounty Hunter story will play the exact same if you pick a Power Tech versus a Mercenary. What these options do is they change the weapons that you're using and the abilities that you have and kind of the play style. When you're under Sith Warrior and you pick a Marauder, you can only be a damage dealing class, but you get two lightsabers. So pretty awesome, dual wielding lightsabers. My very first character was dual wielding lightsaber. On the Republic side, it was a Sentinel under the Jedi Knight. Just wanted to have two lightsabers, freaking amazing. Sith Juggernaut only gets one lightsaber, but they also have the option of turning into a tanking class if they want. Sith Sorcerer shoots a lot of lightning, pretty cool, has a single lightsaber, has the option of becoming a healing class as well. Sith Assassin has your dual lightsaber, so you get a lightsaber coming out each end of the hilt. They have the option of becoming a tanking class. Bounty Hunter, this is your non-force user. Power Tech, this is more of a ranged melee mixed class when you pick the power tech so the majority of their abilities you have to be very short range so they play a lot more like a melee class power tech has the option of becoming a tanking class the mercenary is going to play fully ranged character has the option of becoming a healer imperial agent you can have your operatives the operative plays like a melee class like your power tech has the option of becoming a healer sniper is a fully ranged class for that range and they can only be a damage dealing class so I'm going to pick a Sith Marauder. I want to go through the Sith Warrior storyline again. And I feel like having my two lightsabers again. At the very top here you can see there were some buttons that tell you a little bit of... So Sith Marauder, there's three disciplines you can pick. And you can see damage, damage, damage. And you can see the Juggernaut was actually still listed here. And that's where you can see you can pick a tank or two damage rolls. You only get to pick one roll. So if I pick Marauder, I can only either pick Annihilation, Carnage, or Fury until the next patch which is when they're going to change that. So in the next patch, they're going to allow you to pick the story you want, which they're going to not name it Sith Warrior, Sith Inquisitor, Bounty Hunter, Imperial Agent as a class anymore. They're going to say this is the story of the Sith Warrior or whatever. And they'll actually allow you to pick and say you can play as any Force user while going through the Sith Warrior storyline. Or as a Bounty Hunter storyline, you can play any of the non-Force users. So you can freely switch between them. You're no longer locked into saying a Sith Warrior can only be dual lightsabers or a single lightsaber and damage dealing or tank. So now you can have a Sith Warrior who plays as a lightning sorcerer and potentially even a healer if you wanted or you could have the dual staff of Sith Assassins. 
So, and then they say a bit more combat roles, and then they tell you a bit about the story if you want. Let's hit next, and this opens up. Pick your race. You can see the majority of them aren't unlocked. Most of them you have to pay real money for cartel unlocks or potentially buy them in game. If you can see some have an unlock symbol because I've unlocked them through other means. We're gonna go with Pure Blood Sith yet again. My previous Sith warrior was also Pure Blood Sith. Now you select your gender. Looks like it's time. There is a different voice actor depending on the gender. You can hear that preview. Oh, he is so ugly. So now there's four body sizes, and it's very interesting. You're a very short, small man. You're a skinny, tall-ish man. You're a very tall, very muscular man. Or you're just chungus, beefy. One thing I would caution, if you're anything other than a body type 1 or 2, there are some shortcuts in the game that you can't fit through. It's not major, it's very minor. It's neat. Females, it's... Very interesting how they've Define done the body size for the female, badly. so I'll quickly show that. You've got your extremely Define anorexic petite badly. female. I don't know how you're supposed to be a hero of the galaxy and Looks a conqueror like and a savior and everything off. else when you barely Rage. even eat enough to be able to stay awake during the day, but sure, somehow you're an amazing warrior. Body type 2, Define. the healthy female. She's She's eating a little rage. bit more. She's, you know, this is this is much better. Now I like body type too. She's a little bit tall for a female, but you know, if you're gonna be saving the galaxy and you're strong, maybe you are a bit of a bigger person. Looks and then like we get into the Amazon the warrior, the extremely muscular, very tall female. Badly. This is uh my Jedi Sentinels female body I will type bring three. The and then you get into body type four, which is just looks like it's time for very a blood thick, but not like Chungus on the male side. Let's just say you do like to indulge in a little bit of extra dessert every now and again. One thing I really now don't understand is Sith how there can capable. be so much genetic variation the in their needs. face for like what should be a single race. This doesn't make a lot of sense if you ask me. It's useless These scars, I gotta say, some of them are just a little bit on the corny side. I will bring I've the never been a huge needs. fan of like the big force. Looks like, it's time like you know, you've been cut across the eyeball. Like it's this. Useless. I'm gonna give him some scars anyways. Why the hell not? But in this future, they have so much good medical technology, there's no now way you can get that what a if you is capable of. Yes, of I am going to intimidate you to death with my mohawk. There we go, the greaser with the slick back hair. That's what we're gonna go with. Now let's pick a different color. Time this guy, this guy likes his skin whitening. Let's put on that whitening cream. That's what all the cool people do, is they whiten themselves. No, you're a fucking Sith. Come on. Like, Sith are all about, like, being pure blood, not about being whitewashed. Now comes the most important and the hardest part of every single character creation is picking your name. You never want to leave this up to the random button. Absolutely not. Like, look at these. These are just, these are just useless, stupid, boring, horrible names. Yeah, they are. I got no problem saying that. Hey, let me put in inbred Sith. I'm actually really surprised about that, that it wasn't taken. <laughs> All right, so now that we've uh, decided to skip the rest of that intro video, because, you know, issues, let's see what our landing on our planet and starting off our class looks like so any new character that you make that is not a boosted character you're going to be limited in what you can actually do in the game you're gonna be guided through on a little bit of a pathway and you get to enjoy Corban chat apparently so right off the bat here this is how cutscenes and dialogues work there'll be this conversation back and forth you can press spacebar to skip each individual segment of audio which relates to the captions that you see below and then at some point it becomes your choice what your answer is going to be and they'll give you one to three or two to three choices typically uh, if you hover over them sometimes the middle area will show a dark side or a light side alignment to tell you if the game considers that a light side or a dark side choice and will influence your progression towards dark or light side of the force even if you're not a force user you still have the dark and light you get to choose, you get to try and think, you know, what's going to be my character's fit? How do I want to play them? When you click on them, what your character actually says isn't quite exactly what you were expecting. That's going to happen to you a lot, sadly. You can always press the escape key if you want and start the conversation over. The greatest threat you face is the backstabbing of everybody else. 
Exactly. But I just got here, I'm a whiny brat. I'll try to talk to him. He will see reason. Okay, so now we just finished our intro cutscene, and now we have this. This is what the game looks like initially. And this is what the game looks like on a character that I've fully set up already. So you can see there's a lot more buttons at the bottom of our screen here. All right, so let's go over a little bit of the UI, and then I'll go into the customization. First thing is, if you look in the top left area, you're gonna have a chat window. You can modify each tab by right clicking on the tab and chat settings and you can choose what things you want to show up in there. So generally the yellow text, I don't like seeing that in my main chat window. You know, I just want to see some basic stuff like what attack killed me as combat information. You can also add additional tabs You can create custom channels. So this is a channel that players can join. You know, maybe you want pink fluffy unicorns to be your channel name. And then you can see in the other tab is where I've got things like my yellow tab. You look under our chat settings, conversations, characters logging in, system feedback. And then you've also got this button up here that just kind of tells you a little bit about what's going on in the world. I don't find this super useful. It'll usually start expanded like this. It'll tell you, you know, here's your galactic seasons to participate in, which some people might know this more of a battle pass. They give you specialized missions to do to earn points. And then as you get points, you get re login rewards, mission log. The idea is to suggest things that you can do in the game and say here, here's kind of the next thing you might want to consider doing. This mission log item here is for the actual weekly event that's going on. So right now Death Marks is a special event that's going on with bounty hunting in the game. A number of people online on your planet. This includes all instances of the planet that have players in it. A number of friends that are online. Guild members that are online. How many mail messages do you have? You have to go to the mailboxes we showed you. And then galactic seasons and daily login rewards. Up on the top middle, this is where the majority of kind of uh, opening up different windows in the game if you don't know the hotkeys and accessing different content. So the very first tab here is just a bunch of different common windows and stuff that they think you'll use. There's content, you know, things that you can do in the game, a galaxy map, world map, explore, social things, system things such as preferences, interface editor, etc., and then cartel market. Over on the right, you're gonna see your mission log. You can toggle that depending on how much screen real estate you feel like you have. And then there's also a different type of mission log, so achievement tracking down there. We've got our mini-map, which I've moved on us. And mini-map, I find that it is most useful if you zoom out the majority of the way. There's a few useful buttons on your mini-map that you'll become familiar with in the future. The biggest one is the three people icon. This is the activities window or group finder button. You can also access solo content off here and you can see if you're locked out of any operations in the game if you end up doing operations as a subscriber. Once you have your starship unlocked, you'll be able to access the galaxy map here. There's ping, time, you can switch what instance you're in, some additional commands, change from PvE to PvP. You can also press the hotkey M to bring up the local map. You can change the setting in the preferences. You have it display the world map instead of the area of the map you're in. Otherwise, you just click on this area down here to toggle between the whole area of the so-called planet, which right now we're not actually on a planet, and the specific smaller area you are inside. This is your map. There's a lot of settings, filters you can change. You can open up Galaxy Map from here, or Shift M will also open your Galaxy Map. Dark and light toggle, depending if you want to consider yourself dark side, light side. And then you've got your actual buttons your user interface. As you can see, I've got myself right here, and then I clicked on myself. Now it becomes my target. I could click on my companion instead. They become my target. And this one down here is an additional window I've turned on that is target of target. So this shows me what is my target looking at? What are they targeting? It can be quite useful on enemies to see if they're gonna be shooting you or somebody else. Got a companion over here. And then all my buttons. How you wanna lay out your buttons and how you choose to is really up to you. There's a lot of different ways you can do that. We're gonna quickly go back to default. It's very bare bones. You can't fit too many abilities on your bar. Use this to scroll between the different windows. You can use hotkeys to quick toggle. I just really don't like this in general. I would suggest well, maybe you might wanna start off with enhance. It just gives you that extra bar. When you're starting out early on in the game, you don't have many abilities. You don't need to have a lot of bars out, but it's your choice if you wanna start with something more advanced. I have found that as I was going through and making these different quick bars for myself, I had to modify things and change things as I played around a bit and got comfortable with where I wanted my buttons. Everyone's different. Some people like to have their big grid. 
of basically four rows of 12 buttons. I like to have mine kind of grouped up and categorized. Here's my main attacking abilities. Down here are other useful abilities that I might want to use. Over on the right are usually things that I don't use as much. I haven't finished setting up this character. I'm probably going to move things around. These ones that have names like Muffin Fish and DPS Setup and Heal, these are all ones that I've customized and I've saved that. Whereas these top ones are all just default in the game. If you want to get into more detail, you can click this button here. Looks like kind of like the plus cross circle thing, or you can go up to system and interface editor. We'll go from here, open interface editor. And this allows you to customize all of your interface, at least with all the options they have. Just so you know, this is how I set up my custom ones. So let's talk about the common windows that you're gonna use. You're gonna find that most of them are going to be under this first one up there, character sheet, inventory, abilities, combat proficiencies, legacy. You might want some of the ones that are also under content as well. Mission log, uh, companions and contacts. This is how you summon your different companions to bring them out for you. You can tell them to sell trash items from here as well, sell the junk in your inventory. Or if you right click them, I have no junk right now, so it's not coming up with the option. And then I can also change their role. This is another important thing. Once you get a companion in the game, you can choose if they're going to heal you, tank for you, or damage for you. I never suggest sending them to tank unless it's a very specific high level scenario. You're probably going to either want to set them to heal or damage. Most of the time I run with mine on damage. All right, so now we'll talk about the windows that I think are the most useful and the most commonly used. So we've got our inventory window. You're going to be using this a lot. As you can see, I have spent the money to fully unlock this inventory. I now have all slots available to me. We've got our character sheet that shows the information about our character, allows us to customize and stuff like that. We've got our abilities windows where you're going to find all the different abilities that are available to you. We've got our combat proficiencies. This is where you would choose what role you want to play specifically, and that allows you to unlock all the unique special abilities too. And in this case, I'm set to Sawbones, which is a heal class rather than one of the two damage classes. There's a progression of all the things you unlock as you level up. These utility points on the right side, they're little things that you get to customize and tweak your character to be better at certain situations than others and you unlock them with this symbol. So at level 67 and 75, I'll get my last two. Our abilities window. So one of the very important buttons you wanna get used to is quick travel. Here's where you find it under abilities in general. You can drag that onto your bar. Once we talk about the legacy, here's where you'll find your legacy ability unlocks. You're gonna find vehicles once you get a mount, any pets you have if you wanna summon a specific pet to follow you around on your adventures. Here we've got, you know, some of these are passives and some of these are active. If it says passive, you can't create a button for it. If it doesn't say passive, you can. That's the general idea. All right, so you might have noticed that I'm moving around with my camera, doing all this stuff, and I haven't really explained what I'm doing. Maybe you already know from reading the tutorial or other stuff, but if you don't know, here's a quick thing on that. So first off, I use my mouse for a significant amount of movement. Hold, right click, and move turns your character to face that direction, as well as your camera. Very, very useful. This is what I use most of the time when I'm uh, running, because I can just hold down the key to run forward or run backwards, and I can control myself using my mouse. The other awesome thing, instead of having to hold down a keyboard button to move forward, you can hold left and right click together, and now you're playing one-handed, and you're able to run around. Pretty awesome! Left click is going to just move your camera, so say you want to look at stuff in a different way, but you still need to face away. So maybe you're attacking somebody, and you want to change because your back is against the wall and your camera sucks, you can move it so that you're still facing them, attacking them, but you can see what's going on around you now. I'm using my scroll wheel to zoom in and zoom out. I have done a edit to increase the max zoom distance. The keyboard shortcuts, you can strafe, you can rotate, you can move forward, you can move backwards. That's basically all of the main things you need to know about moving and getting around in the game and controlling your camera. One thing that I also want to point out about clicking buttons, we talked about on the inventory screen how you right click buttons to use them, while well, on your actual user interface bar is out here, you're going to actually left click items to use them instead. Right click. So now let's talk about all the preferences the game has. There's quite a few that you might want to set up and change for your first time. You can go under the System Preferences tab here, or you can press Escape, and you can find Preferences as well as Interface Editor that way. The first thing we want to talk about is key bindings. I love talking about key bindings. There is a system to save them, and you can name whatever they are, and then you can load them by pressing the buttons to the left here. So once you do create your custom key binds, make sure you save them. 
What do I want to go over into key bindings? Targeting, there's not too much to say in here. Most of the defaults are going to be totally fine. It's important to note that this is a tab target game. So you're going to use tab to target next enemy. Although you can manually click on things if you want. Left to right click as we talked about earlier. Quick bar. So all these bars that I've got out with all these buttons, you'll notice some of them have little uh, icons in the top left that tells me what the hotkey is. This is where you change all of your hotkeys for your quick bars. I have the majority of them without any hotkeys on, but feel free to do as much hotkeys as you want because the more you learn hotkeys, the easier it is to use them in the future, and they definitely allow you to do certain things better. It is impossible, in my opinion, to play the game at the highest level without using at least some hotkeys. Movement, here you go, you can hotkey some different things for moving. I don't like using WASD, so I've rebound a lot of my movement keys, and I also don't like the way that they put the rotate where you'd usually expect the strafe. Auto run, very useful, having this button. When you press it, your character just continues to run forward as if you're pressing the run key. Interface, so this is how you bring up different windows, basically. Shift M for your galaxy map, toggle inventory, stuff like that. Now, under preferences, Controls is where you're going to find a lot of the ones you're going to want to customize. A lot of these are going to be account-wide, but just be aware that some settings are going to be per specific character you create. So under general, auto loot on right click. This means that when you right click an enemy with a loot beam, instead of having to manually take the items out of the inventory, a uh, little window that pops up and transfer them to your inventory, it will automatically take all those items. So it just, I always suggest turning it on. There's really no reason not to take the loot. Pretty easy to sell and get rid of later. Enable area loot. Definitely take this one, instead of having to right click each light beam to pick up, you click on one and generally, other than when it glitches, you pick up everything near you at the same time. Deselect target upon clicking terrain. Absolutely, absolutely unselect this. As a more advanced player, this is a super frustrating, super bad thing. So you might have an enemy targeted and you might be busy attacking them and then suddenly they're not selected anymore. This will happen to you. Generally it's because you're using your left click and your right click in the game. So most common way that this happens is as you try and rotate your camera, the game counts it as a click and boom. Now you've got something selected. The other thing is I've actually found sometimes while using my abilities on my quick bar, it just randomly deselects enemies too. If you have this option selected and then you click anywhere on the ground, your target becomes unselected. I hate it. Do not use it as an advanced player. Auto target closest enemy. Do not use this either. As an advanced player, this is a horrible thing. This means that every time you press one of your offensive abilities, it's going to find an enemy in range and attack it. This can be really bad because you might be fighting a group and it will actually target somebody who's in a different group and now you're in combat with more than one group and you might die because there's too many enemies at once. You want to make sure that you're very specifically choosing your targets and you're not accidentally attacking things that you weren't supposed to attack at that point in time. So make sure that's turned off. You can change the camera settings. I don't think I've changed any of them personally other than camera max distance is 100%. Ability action cue window is a little bit more of an advanced feature. It's to deal with lag. Almost everybody will need 0.5. Unless you have exceptionally good connections to the server, it's very low ping. You're probably going to need 0.5. If you have really, really bad connection, you might want to go higher than 0.5, but I would suggest 0.5 is the ideal number for the majority of people. Now you're targeting. As I said, this is a tab target. I'll have a section later in the video talking about targeting, but here are the options for them. Uh, show next target in cycle. Make sure that you have this checked on. It's a super awesome ability. Uh, I love it now that I'm used to it. Cycle and screen space. Basically, do you want the game to take its default kind of, I'm gonna try and guess which enemy near the middle of the screen you wanna target next, or do you want it to just always go in a predictable left to right pattern from the enemy you currently have selected. Sticky ground target reticule. So basically if I have an ability, you can see this huge reticule on the ground now that says I want to place that ability down. And if I get out of range of the ability, it doesn't deactivate the ability because I have this option checked. Otherwise when I click out of range, that ability would no longer be available and I'd have to click on it again to bring it up again. Quick ground target activation. What this means is that whatever you currently have targeted, if you double click that, it will center that ability on that target rather than you having to manually place it. All right, fly text. So there's not a lot I'm gonna talk about fly text other than it is a whole wealth of different information that can show up around you, around your character as you're playing, and it does have a graphical performance hit. 
So I highly suggest going in here, taking a look at which ones are important to you, which ones you think are worth keeping and turning off the rest because it adds clutter and it adds performance hit creating all that text for you. Definitely if you love having it on, turn it on. That is your choice, your way to play. Combat logging, enable combat log to file if you're gonna use programs like StarParse. This is where you find that. User interface. There is also going to be some settings here that you're gonna to want to change. So under general, there's not too much that I change other than if you want to disable tutorial alerts and you know disable a few other things, conversation stuff. Now this is going to be a per character setting, show conversations alignment gain. I really like turning this on. As I showed you in a conversation window, usually you have to hover over the item and then you see in the middle of the conversation choices, what is the dark or light side alignment if it has one. If you toggle this on, beside the text that shows you, it will actually have a little symbol if there's a dark or light side choice. That way, if you're using your one, two, three keyboard buttons to choose your choices, you're gonna know if it's dark or light side, you don't have to hover over it. Subtitles, turn on subtitles. I believe this one is account wide though, but either way, I love having subtitles on for conversations. If you're looking for it, that's where you find it. Cooldown settings, show ready flash, show global cooldown ready flash. I'm not 100% sure if these work properly all the time. I don't know, I just leave them on. But this one is a per character setting and I highly suggest turning it on on all of your characters. Show cooldown text. So when we activate something, it gets a cooldown timer. And this little progress bar can make it very hard to tell how long you have left. Because every ability has a different cooldown timer, it can be very hard to guess how many seconds is left based on how far it is without this text showing up. So make sure you turn that on and then under cooldown text settings, you can change the size and then show tenths of a second. Generally, you're gonna want two. But what this means is that once you get down to two seconds remaining on the ability, it's gonna start breaking it down to a tenth of a second. Some classes for their rotation, their priority system, you might need to know at a different amount. So I have one class where I wait until the ability was 8.3 seconds to know that I need to use the next ability. So that's where you can change it to something else. Two is a great default though, because our global cooldown, how often we can use abilities is by default every one and a half seconds. It gives me a better idea of exactly when I need to stop. So there's the one and a half seconds, and then I'd know, okay, that one's gonna be available for me. A couple other useful settings under user interface would be inventory. Do you want it to automatically close your inventory when using your cargo hold or legacy storage, which are your banks where you get to store stuff uh, and so that it's not taking up your inventory space? I like to deselect this option because a lot of times I still want my inventory window open when I finish uh, leaving a bank. But when I'm earlier in the game and I'm playing through my class story, I tend to want to have it selected because usually I'm doing different things with my inventory management at that point. And then automatically close inventory when using a vendor. So you right click the vendor, brings up your inventory. When you run away, it'll close it automatically. I like having that on all the time. Graphic settings. We're going to just briefly touch on a couple things. I don't want to do too much. There are some really good guides out there. Most people know how and understand how to do graphic settings. You can customize different stuff. The biggest thing, if you want to change the impact of the quality and the frames per second, is shadows. Shadows is one thing that creates a huge amount of performance issues and it does make the game look nicer but it takes up the most resources out of everything and I feel like it's one of those things that you can learn quite easily to play without but be warned there are some fights in the game, some mechanics that if you have shadows turned off they do not display properly and you're going to be screwed out of being able to see them. So right now, very hot, summertime, I've turned shadows off so that I can keep my frame rates high as well as being able to keep my screen resolution high. If you turn shader complexity to very low, it's only like a 3% performance difference between low and very low on average, and you're going to miss out on some things that are important to show you how to play the game. Uh, certain lights won't light up correctly. You can turn it to very low if you need to, but I highly suggest putting it on low if you can because it's such a small performance hit. So one of the last things that I want to go over under the preferences is nameplates. As you can see, I've got a lot of these disabled because one, they're a graphics hit, and two, I just don't like a lot of clutter. So nameplate on self, do you wanna see the nameplate on yourself or not? Pretty straightforward. You can choose if you wanna see the nameplate on your companions, if you wanna see the nameplates on friendly NPCs. Now as a newer player, you're probably going to want to keep on the nameplates on the friendly NPCs at a minimum because not all NPCs will have an icon above them 
so that you know that they're a vendor or whatever. I definitely suggest keeping nameplates on enemies on, even on NPCs. Nameplates on enemy players is actual other players in the game that are from the enemy faction. A couple things I want to point out here is nameplates on friendly players. I find it's cluttered. I don't like having it on. Sometimes it's not an issue, you know, especially as a newer player, you might want to leave them on or just some people like having them on in general. I just don't like the clutter, so I turn them off. Scale nameplates with distance. This takes up graphical performance, which is why you can disable it. But as you can see, it's it's a really gross setting to have turned on. I highly don't suggest turning it on because then the nameplates take up so much room on your screen. It does mean that you can actually read them from a distance though. So there you have it. You have a general big overview of your user interface, the different windows that you'll probably be interacting with fairly common and also the different preferences that you're going to want to go in and tweak and customize to your uniqueness. The one thing I do want to reiterate with all of your user layout, interface, bars, is get used to playing around with them, changing them, figuring out what works best for you as you get more abilities and as you get used to playing your class more. And of course, always remember the lock unlock button here, unless you want to be in the middle of a fight and find out that you just ripped one of your abilities off and have no idea where to find it again. So the first thing that I want to point out, you might have noticed that when I was on the other side of this door, it was green and now it's red. So these are called phases. So when you cannot enter a phase at this time, you'll see a red door like that. When you go inside of a phase, it's no longer the open world where everybody's able to kind of have a free for all and everything's kind of shared with the massive multiplayer online aspect of the game. They're your unique individual phases where you get to do your stuff, you have your enemies, they don't respawn immediately so you can see there's actually another player out here here's another one looks like a female body type 4 and there's also a male here so i'm just going to quickly show you here's our mailbox i've got a whole bunch of stuff in here these are rewards from playing the game that i get every time i create a new character i can get all check messages with this convenient button or i can individually right click any items, take attached credits, so on. I can read them, I can delete them. If we press I to open our inventory, we have all of these items we just picked up. You can right click items to claim them. You can left click items to move them around in your inventory. This item here is a decoration. If I control left click, as you can see in the bottom of the tooltip there, it'll bring up a preview of the decoration. Same thing with like the pets, I can preview what they'll look like when I have them out. The main reason why I'm claiming all this stuff right now is just to free up inventory space. So as a brand new player, you might not have all of these extra things that I'm getting right now, but I do highly suggest looking around and searching for promo codes you can enter to get some of these items. As you can see, I'm opening up this box and it comes with gear. So that's kind of cool. You know, get some gear to start off. If I press my hotkey, bring up the character sheet, you can see I'm wearing almost nothing. So now I can start right clicking the gear. You don't have to have the character sheet open. And you'll see that immediately it changes the look of my character. Now obviously, oh my gosh, that is friggin' amazing. What is that, like Bumblebee? Transformer? That is so good, I like that outfit. I am very impressed. So we can do things called emotes, where you do a slash and then a command. So I just did a bow, because pay hey, my respects for such an awesome costume. You'll see that my looks changed immediately. Damn, I guess I can't get the money to afford changing my outfit. So, what do you need to do? You need to go and kill some enemies. Just like pretty much every other game. As you can see, I actually already have a companion out. They're helping me kill stuff. Loot beam, right click, loot it. What did I get? You can see in the yellow text, basic med pack, pristine talon. Some enemies will give you credits. Not all enemies will. And then the junk that they get, you can sell that to make money. Wow, look at that. I already leveled up freaking making it way too easy to level up. So now here you can see a sell junk button or I can right click on the items that I want to sell. I'm going to hit the sell junk button and then I'm going to sell my med pack. We're going to go and put on a pair of boots. Those boots are very important. And we're going to hit commit. So there we go. I now have boots. It makes it much easier to walk around on this rock. I think we're moving up in the world. All right, so now that we've taken an excessive amount of time to show you just the basics, we are going to move on from that map has this purple icon here it's telling you where you want to go next no sometimes these icons are wrong the game's not always very good at giving you the the accurate waypoint some of them just haven't been updated over time so first thing you're going to notice is you're going to do a lot of walking 
a lot of walking. You're gonna keep walking at some point. So I've just gone to a trainer here. It was this up, this kind of upside down chevron or tent symbol, and it had a green plus in it. It meant that there were abilities available for me to train. You see any abilities that you can actually use will automatically show up and populate themselves in empty spaces on your quick bar. We've got punish, which is our social ability. So I can take my companion, smack them in the face and see them complain about it. What? Evil. I'm a Sith. What do you expect? All right, so the general idea, you probably played games before, you probably know the general idea that's been going on here. But if you didn't already know, I'm friendly units. These are NPC units. I've got the nameplates turned off, but usually you'll see their nameplates green like this on player. Other players also have blue like that. And enemy characters, just random mobs. If you get close enough to the mobs, they will start attacking you and they'll say, oh, you're an enemy, I want to eat you. If you stay far enough away, they won't do that. So, and in an open world, when they die, after a certain amount of time, they will come back. They'll respawn and be available again for players to attack and kill. If you want to gain more experience, you're going to want to fight them. But there's other times where you're like, I don't want to waste my time fighting enemies forever. There's enough walking in this game that I'm just going to breeze right through. Just like I did right there, none of them attacked me, I was far enough away. This symbol here is the quest symbol in the game. So this tells you that there is a quest. If you right click, you can take a quest. And it'll tell you what you need to do. And then you're going to get a bonus for finishing that quest, especially the experience bonus you gain from completing quests is quite significant. So that's a really nice thing as well. As you can see, there's just different tunnels and doorways. You can see on my map here, it's not very useful when you zoom very far in on the map in my experience. So I like to zoom out almost as far as I can. I usually zoom back in one more time. Of course, you can bring up your main map whenever you're not sure exactly what maze path you need to take to get to where you're going. I do have another video which goes over all the things you can do if you've already had previous characters and you're making new characters to boost yourself with all the benefits you get from having been playing for a while. So again, you can see these phases. When you hover over them, you see whose phase that is. You see the red that you can't go in, the green means that I can go in. I walk through, now I'm in that phase. I can still see everything that's out in the open world, but anybody out there cannot see me inside my phase unless they group up with me and walk into my phase and then now they will be in my phase with me and be able to participate with me. And now they don't look the same on my back, I don't like that. And I also have this thing called a companion gift that's now available to me. So if I select my companion and then I right click the companion gift, it'll give it to them. And you can look by pressing B, you can bring up their levels and their influence. Or you can press N, which is the window where you can select your companions. And you can also see in here and you can have them sell the junk in your inventory for you. You can see the timer here saying it's going to take a minute until my companion's back. But that way I don't have to find a vendor to sell the junk it's, and I can also tell them, summon them and bring them back early. So one of the things that you might notice as I'm going along here is sometimes you might notice that I'm physically clicking the buttons down on my bar to use them and other times I'm not. Everything in the game you can just click on the buttons to use them but when you have them hotkeyed, when you've set up a hotkey as we mentioned, now you can use that on enemies. There's a couple things about this game is by default anything on quick bar 1 if you right click an enemy, I'll use it. Right now I don't have anything in that space, but if I move it there and now I right click this enemy, you'll notice that it auto attacks them with this attack here. I don't like that feature as an advanced player, so I would definitely advise not using it. That's why I've got my quick bars screwed up like this. I would definitely highly suggest getting used to tab target system and being used to using hotkeys as much as you can if you want to be a more advanced player. Now, I'm not saying you have to do this because you can definitely get away with clicking, but if you want to be a very advanced player, it's going to be so much easier if you've started off with these good habits. How tab targeting works. So right now I have nothing targeted. You can see because of the preference setting where I said I want to see the next target, you can see that empty arrow. As soon as I press tab, it becomes filled. And now there's a targeting reticule around that enemy. And you can see now this arrow has moved to the next enemy. So if I move my screen around, right now I'm set up so that it tends to be 
whichever it thinks I'm looking at. So it tries to guess based on the middle of my screen who I'm looking at as to who I want to target. So you can see it moving. We go under controls. Our auto target closest enemy when using an offensive ability. This means you wouldn't need to target swap. If we scroll down and we cycle in screen space, this would mean as soon as I start doing tab, you notice now it goes left to right and it's going to go left to right every time. So getting used to that tab targeting is quite useful. As you can see, I'm pressing my ability and it doesn't auto attack the next enemy because I don't have them targeted. So that again is that preference that we were showing you, auto target closest enemy. As an advanced player, it's a really bad thing to do. I highly suggest turning it off so you don't get used to that feature. And the reason why this can be really bad is because when you're fighting one group, you might press an offensive ability and then find that you started attacking a whole nother group, causing extra enemies to join the fight. So with the way I've got my preferences set up and I've suggested for you, I have to press tab to target an enemy first or manually click the enemy I want before I can do any of my attacks on them. And then I have to tab over to new enemy when I want to continue attacking. The game doesn't actually allow you to tab over to targets outside of the group you're fighting. As you can see, I'm only cycling between these three enemies and I'm not able to attack a different group and accidentally pull them into battle with me. There's an extra little targeting thing that I've set up here that shows up. This is target of target. It tells me when I have an enemy targeted, does he have somebody else targeted? And that means he's going to attack that person. You want to get used to that tab targeting, getting familiar and comfortable with you have to manually tab to the next enemy you want to attack so that way you don't accidentally attack something you're not supposed to. So now as I'm making my way towards the temple, one thing that's very interesting about that waypoint is they tell you to go through the temple. Uh, there was a mission there in, that, in there that you had to complete, but you actually can walk. There's a path on the outside that hasn't been explored yet, which I can use to walk there. The default settings, you can have your map up and it'll fade as you're walking and you can click right through the map. You can't interact with the map. As soon as you stop, it becomes solid and now you can interact with it. So as you can see, the map updates. I gain experience as I explore the map, which helps me level up and I get to see more of the map. And you can see I'm already on the world view, so I can't change it any more than that. You can see all the different instances. Uh, they'll all have different number of people on them. and. The things that tells you how many guildmates, group members, friends, they're wrong. They don't work. Sucks. Oh well, deal with it. Don't assume that that is ever correct. It, it always seems to be glitchy and wrong. Now, there's also an ancient relic over here. There's this thing called an item modification station. You don't need to use them anymore. They've changed the game. You never need to travel to one anymore. But they're still there and you can technically still use them to modify items. At a low level, doesn't even matter. They've made the game very forgiving and very easy so that until you reach uh, level 70, you don't even have to worry. You just put on whatever gear you want and don't worry about it. This icon here, this is your taxi service. This is how you travel faster around the map, especially to areas that you haven't been before. We talked about you're going to hate walking. You're going to do a lot of walking. So let's show you what it looks like to hop on a taxi. You're going to take a taxi ride. It takes a little while to complete. Like, how would he even get down there? He would die! There's no way! That ladder, they don't even let you climb that ladder. It's too dangerous even by cis standards. We just completed our first taxi ride. Oh my gosh. These are quick travel points. So generally they come unlocked. If they have a little glowing icon above them, it means they didn't auto unlock for you. And you want to right click it to make sure it's unlocked. And when we open our quick travel button, it brings up a special map that shows me all the points I've been and unlocked. So now I can use this to immediately travel back to the Sith Academy where I was. You can see there's going to be a six minute cooldown on that. You can unlock that in the future to make that quick travel much shorter of a cooldown so you can use it more often for moving around and traveling around before you get your first mount or speeder is you got to walk everywhere. You can take the taxi and then that quick travel button. So that's your options right now for getting around. The quick travel is extremely useful. I highly suggest getting used to using that quite a bit. And then you can get some specialized quick travel buttons later in the game that allow you to teleport to very specific parts of the game. So as a new player, once you get through the first few minutes of your class door, you're going to end up kind of on this area that's going to have a bunch of vendors and stuff. So if we look at my mini map here, we can see the icon for a bunch of vendors. We can see the icon for quests. We can see the icon for a trainer, quick travel point. 
and our speeder. So just wanted to briefly go over vendors, what you can do with them, so on. So Medical Droid is one that you're going to interact with a fair bit throughout playing the game. Here you can come and repair your gear. If you're part of a guild that allows you to use guild repair funds instead of your own personal money, you can buy things that help you in combat. Usually I never buy any of their stims. I will just buy med packs if anything. You can sell items by right clicking on those items, sell them. Or if you didn't mean to sell them, you can go to your buy back tab and you can buy them back. Here's the repair tab. I never go there because I always just click repair all. The way that your companion sells junk, you can also do it with the button here. If you have any junk, sell junk. This is the basic kind of what you're mostly going to be doing with the vendor is just repairing gear, selling stuff, and if they have anything you want to buy. So there are going to be different vendors who allow you to buy weapons, who allow you to buy gear. So my class right now, I am not heavy armor. I'm actually going to be medium armor. But the thing is, I can still buy heavy armor if I want to use it as a cosmetic item. I just won't be able to equip it. You can see the difference in how those icons appear based on whether or not you can equip it. And it'll show you the item rating, the stats, how much it costs to buy, etc. We've got the trainer up there, and as I said, I've already unlocked through my collections a mobile trainer it does the exact same thing, except that I have the convenience of not needing to be at a base where all the other vendors are. Alright, so we walked inside of a building. And it's kind of hard to tell where our quest is. We can see on the mini map, it shows the general direction, but how do we get there? We'll open your map, and then you can see the pathways that you want to follow to get to your actual quest. And you can leave that open if you want while you're walking, or if you've got a good memory, you can close it. You'll notice there's an area called Cantina. So I believe it's only subscribers who get resting XP. What happens is when you are rested, is you earn XP faster when you're logged out of the game to help you keep caught up with leveling with the players who are on all the time. The basic vendor in here, I could repair, I could sell junk. And he also lets me have a jukebox token, which I can use to change the music. But I guess one of the things that I've glossed over a little bit here is, is the actual inventory system and the different screens I've been popping up and this and that. I've gone over them pretty quickly. You know, I'm so used to knowing them. Inventory. Let's go over what the inventory window has on it. Obviously, this is just the space where I store all my items. I can right click to consume items, to activate them, to use them. So there we go, I just activated a med pack, or I can left click, pick it up, and then I can click again, or I can just drag and release. You can see in the bottom right, this is how many credits I have, just over 4 million. Bottom left, 33 out of 80 is how many inventory spaces I'm currently using out of the maximum amount. And you can sort it. This little button here moves all crafting materials that you gather and collect into your materials inventory. You can right click it and you can change what quality you want to get moved. So if you don't want certain qu high quality items to get moved, you can choose not to have them moved. I always set it to legendary and just move everything. Mission items, so any unique mission items that you get, they're not showing up on your mission log here, so you can click them. Currency tab, so these are all the different kind of currencies you can earn that they store in different places. I can see how many cartel coins I have. And now on the left side, there's a few buttons. So deconstruction window, this allows you to deconstruct that stuff, break down, it's more advanced. You're probably not gonna use it at all when you're earlier on in the game, vend everything instead. Materials inventory, so we talked about the button to move stuff here. This is where everything shows up and you can easily drag stuff back out into your inventory. You can hold down the shift key and click to bring up split stack. And sometimes you might have to use drag. Now I'm gonna briefly go into what collections is, even though you won't be able to use it as a new player, but it's something that's quite useful, especially if you start getting cartel market items early on. So these are things that you've got that you can potentially give to your character because you've already collected it. And you'll notice that some of them have one button. This transfers a copy to your inventory immediately. So you can actually see I've already got a couple of these lightsaber crystals in my inventory, having transferred them before. And you'll see sometimes that button's grayed out. You do not have permission. And then you can spend the cartel coins to make so that every character can get it for free. So this is a companion that you get through an achievement. So Darth Hexed, every new character you make, you can go into collections and you can give them a companion just like that. It's quite useful. Here's the trainer. So I can get a hollow statue of a trainer so that as I'm wandering around and leveling up, at any point I can just pull out a trainer and have it accessible to me instead of having to go and find where they are. So collections, very useful, really helpful once you've started adding some items there and you're making new characters. The fact that you can now get them on all those new characters is pretty awesome. Again, we already showed you the companions and co contact window 
ever so briefly. I won't go over some of the more advanced things you can do with companions just because this video is designed for players who've just started. You can also change their role up here as well as you can see interactions, file, and you can kind of figure out some of the things they like and they don't like so that when you have the conversation and that companion's active or you're in your ship where all your companions hear your conversation, you can choose if you want to pick stuff that they like to help gain influence with them just a little bit faster. Character sheet. Let's talk about the character sheets. So the first thing you're going to notice is I see a picture of my character and I see all these little pieces of gear here. At least that's what my eye is drawn to. So this is the actual gear you're wearing. The actual stats are all kind of on the left half. If we kind of work our way down, scoundrel, level 63, item rating 183. So item rating, that is basically how strong your gear is. So you can see each individual piece near the very top there has an item rating. This is 178. This is 200. 306 is currently the max. It'll probably increase at some point. And then you've got all your stats here. So these are different stats. It gives you just the raw number and you can hover over them to see a little bit more detailed breakdown. You've got your dark and light alignment toggle to see how dark side or light side you are throughout your adventures. Your social experience or social level. Your valor, which is PvP related. Down here, there's a drop down list for range, tech, and then defense. To see what your defensive stats are. We've actually got another button I wanted to show you because a lot of people like to be able to customize things about their nameplate, about their character. You can select a character title so, and you see that updates and other players will see this when they select you or when they look at your nameplate, call yourself the Sarlacc Stomper. Character flares, so these are cosmetic based items and all the other players will see that if legacy titles. So these can be unlocked through different achievements or completing different things and legacy titles would show up underneath your name. You can choose if you actually want your legacy name to be added on to the end of your character name there. So here's your companion. You can customize your companion, see their stats. You don't have to worry about gearing them. They gear themselves. The only reason why you change any gear is for cosmetic reasons and your ship. But back on our character sheet, I just wanted to briefly touch on cosmetics because to a lot of people, that's a very important part of the game is choosing your outfit, designing it, making sure that you are looking swole. I'm too old to say words like that. I'm sorry. I don't even know what I'm talking about. Okay, carrying on from that. So this is how you are going to figure out how you want to look. So customize appearance. This is not your outfit designer. This just changes a couple little things like you want to hide your head slot. You want to show dark side corruption if you have it. You can also do a few things with your dyes. So all these items, if we hover over and we go control right click to modify there's a die module space in here that's empty and then you can click these buttons to unify the colors of each item to the die that's inside of your chest so you don't need to buy the same die over and over again there's also this button here to unify the colors as well how you actually change your outfits is up here i've got one outfit i could potentially spend money to unlock another outfit which i just did and you can see that there's items in this outfit, but the one I just unlocked, all the items that are there are this dark color. Any item that's in here is now your outfit and it's been saved. And any item that's darked out is still part of that outfit, but it's not saved. As soon as I change the actual headpiece that I'm wearing on my armor here, these dark squares are going to update to whatever I'm wearing. So these dark squares are always the actual armor I'm wearing for my stats. So this stuff here. It's a bit of a problem. You don't want to, if you're designing your outfit, you really don't want to leave these spaces black. You really want to make sure they're filled in. Otherwise, those items will no longer be the ones that are applying because you will have changed your gear. You will have changed your armor since then. You cannot put stuff that you currently have equipped in here to make them show up as active or saved. What you would have to do is you'd actually have to unequip that item and then you can put it in here and now it's going to be saved when I hit the commit button and then it would actually be saved in place. If you are currently wearing something that you think looks really good with your outfit and you want to make sure that that item doesn't change when you update your outfit in the future, make sure you unequip it, throw it on here and commit those changes to save them. All right, so let's look at what's going to happen if we're going to create an outfit that has a bunch of blank spaces and see how that goes. This outfit looks like everything that I currently have equipped on my character. And let's say I just want to make a couple little tweaks. So I want to change the pants and I want to change the boots. And now these areas that are dark, they're not going to stay the same if I change my gear. And now let's see what happens when we change some gear. I'm going to change my chest piece and you'll notice my chest piece on my character actually changed. Now my chest looks different from before, but the pants 
or something that I've already put on so and committed to. So as you can see, as I change these pants, nothing changes with the pants themselves. That would be the thing to note. Anytime you leave any of these spaces blank, changing your gear screws around with your outfit. So it's very, very important that if you like the look of this outfit and you want to save everything as is and you don't want things to update, you just take that gear off, you go over here, throw those items on, and then you could commit that way. They're not going to change on you as you change the actual gear that you're wearing. There you have it. Customizing your character's looks. I find it super unintuitive at times and I really hate the system, but now you understand how it works. This customize appearance button only does a few things like letting you change the die unification. Uh, choosing whether or not to hide head slot, dark side corruption. It's very basic, so it doesn't actually allow you to necessarily change the outfits themselves. This is where you need to go into the middle part and select the outfit that you want. Fill in all the slots, anything that isn't filled in and is just using your currently equipped item, you run the risk of every time you change gear, that is going to look different, it's going to change. Okay, so there we've covered quite a variety of information. We've talked about how to take the time to set up your user interface, go through all the different preferences and see what all the different preferences do for you, key bindings, different options like that. We've talked about how to target enemies, the things that you should start setting up now or the future, to be able to say, this is how I want to be able to play. So that once I get to a higher level, I already have some of those skills baked in. We talked a bit about navigating the map, seeing quest icons, how to kind of figure out where you're going. We kind of showed you where the mission log is. That's where you can keep track of stuff. Sometimes you can see more information about the mission you're on to tell you a bit more about how to get there. I love the fact that my guy's just walking around in boxes and a pair of boots and threatening other acolytes. This is amazing. But yeah, so hopefully all of that's quite useful. We're gonna go into some more advanced videos coming up soon. I just really wanted to give you an overview of what you wanna set up as the base foundation for setting up your experience, your interface, everything like that, how the conversations work. As you can see now, there's actually a dark side choice if I wanna gain dark side. I can choose an option that isn't dark side. And of course you can press space bar if you wanna skip through those cutscenes. And since we're in an instance, nobody else can be in here without being in my group. And you just keep playing the game like this. Have some fun, enjoy it. Don't worry initially about the game seeming too hard or making mistakes. It's very forgiving early on. Just have some fun. Don't worry about thinking you're missing out on something because trust me, you are not. Put on the gear you want to put on, sell everything else. Don't worry about thinking that you need to keep things or you're gonna miss something if you don't catch it early on. You don't need to watch the videos telling you, don't forget to do this. You know, you'll screw up if you don't do that because there really aren't many things in this game that will screw you like that. Thanks, and we'll see you in the next video.